Well, terrorism was recognized to exist in 1980 and it lasted till 2000. But it was relatively late uh, known in Lima. It's only when there were the big bomb explosions here that people started to realize that it was serious. And meanwhile, in the mountains, it had been terrible. But really, uh, assassinations of innocent people, not only by the terrorists, also by the military. It was a great confusion. A commission uh, was installed to find out what exactly had happened, which was the Commission of Truth and Reconciliation. So they worked, I think, over a year and they came back with some information which nobody would believe, about 70,000 victims and they had hearings for months. For month. Each one of those victims uh, has his, her story and it's a grueling story. As a result of the commission, there was an exhibition and people went there and it was an incredible exhibition. It was not only the photos which were so which had such an impact. It was also the way it was, it was uh, installed, which gave me the idea that art could be a vehicle to, um, to step out of its narrow boundaries in which it is nowadays, and to go back to its spiritual roots and to go into life. After seeing it, I went to my studio and I had this beautiful stone, which I had for a couple of years already. Because I lived with my stones before I worked them, you see. But with this one, I wanted to do really something special. So I stood in front of that stone and the, the sentence formed, the eye that cries. And immediately I knew that she would be like a mother earth, crying over what her children do one to the other. So I started to work on the sculpture and then gradually I was sure that the names of the known victims should be included. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what form to choose for that. And then I came upon the labyrinth, which is the labyrinth of Chartres, which is a very old labyrinth also. Also related to Mother Earth, to feminine force, to a stone, to a dolmen. I also realized that it would be a collective work. It had no sense that it be just a work by me. It is one road which leads to the center and then you walk the same road back. And then on the way back, very often you get a thought, a thought about your life, a thought about a problem you, you are struggling with, or a thought about the, the project, about the theme, you see, about terror, about any. It's, it's, it's really fascinating that people go and walk it. It is, it is the central stone with the labyrinth, and the labyrinth is a very magical form which um, raises also a special energy, and it grabs you at levels which you don't control. So this is the drawing of the labyrinth which I made. So the basis of it is a star which has 13 points. People said 13, it's a bad number, you see, until I realized that it's based on the moon phases, which makes it a very feminine based labyrinth. And that was also very important, of course, because this labyrinth in this project is dedicated to Mother Earth, the Pachamama. And it's Pachamama who cries over what her children do to one another. But the stone gives the discipline there. And I have the feeling that this stone is also a stone of judgment, you see. With all her Mother Earth, her lovely f skirt and things like that, no, she, is, she stands in the, in the circle and, and, and she connects heaven and earth. And we stand there and we capture that. That's, that's my sensation when I walk it. And she weeps, and she weeps, yes, on all these names which are there, and, and the names become more and more dense, because in the beginning we still left white stones to, to honor the anonymous victims, but since there's not enough space, at the end it's just name, 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 name. Well, it's, it's difficult to talk about, because it's, 
it seems to what, whatever you say about it is, is not enough. You, you cannot express it. So uh, that's the thing about the work. The work expresses it. The memorial had been attacked by a group of vandals and uh, had been very damaged. Many of the little stones were destroyed. About 100 meters of the 800 meters of the labyrinth was destroyed, pieces all over the place. And the eye of the Ojekiyora was also destroyed. And they had uh, done that with big hammers, with sledge hammers, you see. And then they had covered it with paint. So this became the symbol uh, of of the conflict in a way, isn't it? But also of the division, which should, which should be treated. And the only thing you can think about is to feel sorry, isn't it? And, and to, to try somehow to stop it. So there was no way that we could, that we could restore it. I decided not to restore it because such mourning had been added again to it. And um, the human rights organizations, they said it should not be restored because it should be there. And now it was political and all this sort of things and very stark decision. And uh, so, so it was not restored. When the family said, we cannot live with this anymore. This place is our house. It's the only place where we can where we can remember our people, because the majority disappeared just in the rivers or in, in mass graves. So um, uh, let's clean up. And then meanwhile, the, all the names faded, because this was done with ink. But we found a grant in Holland uh, for the first 10,000 names. We now use the list of the Consejo de Reparation. But till now they have about 16,000 uh, fatal victims and they expect that finally there will be 46,000 fatal victims, you see. So we have started to engrave the first 10,000. And um, I've decided to put the stones back. Whether it goes to the, to the museum or whether it stays in the park, uh, it should be what it what what it was what it was supposed to be in the beginning, no? So we've decided to put them back straight away. Get the stones out, put them back. It was done for the families to honor the victims and to uh, to show people that violence doesn't bring is not a solution to the solution of problems. Not at all. On the contrary, you see. And it, it worked. This is a humanistic uh, project. It's, it's beyond politics. And it's really meant for people to, to start thinking about their lives and how short life is when they walk this and what they will do with what is left of their lives in this situation in this country.